Are you planning a rim-to-rim -rim hike of the Grand Canyon? If so, in this video I'll share what I've learned on my many backpacking trips there. There are two trailhead options for the South Rim, Bright Angel and South Kaibab. I'll assume you are taking Bright Angel, which is what most people do. The first thing you need to know is that hiking the Grand Canyon is like an upside-down mountain. You start by descending, then you climb. The good news is the trails have great switchbacks. The bad news is you can get lulled into thinking this is going to be easy during the descent, but when you start climbing, your legs turn to jello. A one-way trip is around 22 miles, and the park rangers recommend a three-day trip with around 8 miles per day. It's the roughly 2 miles of vertical distance that gets people. It's like descending and climbing four Empire State Buildings. The first thing you need to plan is when you go, as the season is critical. It's unimaginably hot during the summer with temperatures that can soar over 100 degrees during the daytime. Winter has a different set of challenges. The North Rim is closed from November 1st to May 15th, so you need to hike over and back during those months. You can camp at the North Rim in winter, but the shuttles do not operate. The rangers are there, and you may have fresh water, but all the lodging and resupplies are closed. Arguably, the best time to go is in autumn, with its cooler temperatures but you only have about a one-month window in October, and this is a very popular time, which means permits can be tough to get. Another consideration is the wide swing in temperatures between the rim and river. As an example, on one Tanner trail hike, it was 8 degrees at the morning rim start, but we were in shirt sleeves by noon. During the summer, it's pleasant up on the rim, and hellishly hot at the river. In winter, it's bitter cold on the rim and perfect down by the Colorado. Once you've decided when to go, your next step is to plan your pace, route, and campsites. You can do three nights with a short day to Indian Garden, two nights, which is pretty typical and provides an option to take the South Kaibab Trail, or be one of the masochists that tries to make the whole trip in one very long day. Of course, you can always add extra nights for side trips. Keep in mind there is no dispersed camping along the corridor. You must sleep in the designated campgrounds. A night at Indian Garden is a good option if you plan to arrive later on your first day. I've done this when I picked someone up from the Phoenix airport before noon and started hiking late that afternoon. The South Kaibab is a good option for descending the canyon in cooler weather. It is two miles shorter than Bright Angel, but adds 400 feet of elevation. There is no water and there are no campsites along the South Kaibab, so you have to hike all the way down to Bright Angel if you go that route. The yurt used to be a great option for winter camping at the North Rim, but sadly it was permanently shut down due to rodent problems. You really should account for time at Ribbon Falls. It is a must-see that adds several hours to the trip between Bright Angel and Cottonwood campgrounds. When I visited Ribbon Falls in December of 2018, the bridge was closed, requiring fording the creek. We left our packs near the trail, and the ravens raided them while we were at the falls. They unzipped the zippers in my hip belt pockets, so protect your food. If you plan to spend a night at Indian Garden, the short and reasonably level hike out to Plateau Point will give you one of the best views in the entire canyon. My favorite winter hike is the Clear Creek Trail just north of Phantom Ranch. You can do it as a day hike by spending an extra night at Bright Angel, or add two days by spending a night at Clear Creek itself. If you are not doing a round trip, you'll need to decide which way to hike. Many groups do north to south, hiking back to their car. This has slightly less climbing than south to north. My favorite option is to do a round trip in the winter. The canyon looks totally different when you hike it in the opposite direction. Once you have your agenda set, it's time to apply for your permit, which you should do as soon as allowed, as they go quickly. It's even tougher to get a permit for the holiday seasons like Thanksgiving or Christmas week. You can increase your chances of success by providing alternate routes and dates. Be aware that most corridor campsites have room for no more than three to four tents, and group campsites require seven or more campers. As soon as your permit is approved, make your shuttle reservations. You want a thumbs up on all the critical items before arranging your travel. 
At least two months before your hike, you'll want to start your conditioning program. See my video on getting in shape for your first Grand Canyon hike. Being out of shape risks exhaustion and aching muscles, which can detract from the fun. As your hike date approaches, you'll want to get your gear together. I highly recommend a freestanding tent, as the ground is too hard to drive a stake into. There are also no trees to tie a tarp to. You'll want an enclosed bug net for your shelter. There may not be bugs, but the mice at the campsites can be pesky. I've had them run across my face during the night. Note that hammocks are not allowed at Bright Angel and Cottonwood. You can see why in the inset photo where somebody strung theirs up to the backpack hanging pole. For many years, ammo boxes were provided in corridor campsites to protect food from the squirrels and other animals. These have been replaced with food storage boxes that seal tightly and are pretty much impossible for critters to get into. They are a little tricky to fasten as they require a turning motion. Corridor campsites also include a hang rack for your pack. You should use these to keep the mice from chewing through your pack at night. They also have a clear box to put your permit in. This makes it easy for the ranger to inspect your permit when they stop by and you are not at your campsite. If you camp off corridor, do bring a varmint-proof food bag like the earth sack I always use. To keep your footing on snow and icy winter trails, the Canyon Gift Shop sells yak tracks. At a minimum, you should use trekking poles in the winter. The footing is typically only bad for the first or last hour near the rim, but a fall there can ruin your hike. Water is a key concern. It is available at all the corridor campgrounds. I generally carry about two liters during the winter and three during warmer weather. Do check the water availability status at the backcountry office on your arrival. The pipeline has frequent outages which may require you to carry more than you had planned. This hike puts tremendous stress on your feet, particularly on the descents. The common wisdom is to use a shoe about one full size larger than normal so your toes don't get jammed. Do carry a blister kit and maybe some lube for your feet. The trail is incredibly dusty. Unless you like red socks, I recommend the use of gaiters, particularly with low boots or running shoes. The trails were built with countless stairs to help control erosion. I highly encourage you to use trekking poles to save your leg muscles on the ascents and your knees on the descents. You are in Arizona, and sun protection is critical even in winter. Carry sunglasses. Use a wide hat and sunscreen, including for your lips. Nothing worse than sunburned lips and ears. Layering your clothing is key due to the wild temperature variations. I find a windshirt is helpful. When you've got your gear together, it's time to plan and prepare or purchase meals. Keep in mind you'll be burning lots of extra calories and you'll be starved at mealtimes. If available, I recommend you reserve a meal at Phantom Ranch. It means you'll have less to carry and it's a fun time to socialize with it. Right out from under his paws. Does anybody not want to be on YouTube? I'm good. <laughs> Electrolytes like Gatorade are essential, especially in hot weather. You'll be drinking a lot, and plain water gets a little old, so a sweetened drink encourages good hydration. Next topic is getting there. The first thing people seem to overlook is you cannot carry your check stove fuel on airplanes. If you are flying, you'll have to stop and purchase your canister fuel, alcohol, or white gas. Stoves can be transported by plane if clean. I like to stay in Tosayan the night before I begin my hike. During the winter months, they have great off-season rates. I recommend you park your vehicle in the backcountry office lot. It'll be safe there. There's lots of parking and good access to shuttles and buses. After you park, I recommend you make a stop at the Backcountry Info Center to check trail conditions. Get the latest forecast for the canyon, and especially during the winter, check for water availability along the corridor. You can also make any last-minute changes to your itinerary and permit. 
providing spaces available at the campsites you would like to change too. If you are going during the winter, you should be aware that the Flagstaff area can get serious snow, so you might end up driving on slippery roads. Now let's talk about some hints for your hiking. I recommend you start as early in the morning as possible. This will minimize the anxiety of making it to your campsite before nightfall. You'll also get a better pick of campsites. Remember, they are first come, first served. Start off slow in the early hours. You may be stiff and sore from the prior day, and you don't want to be exhausted before noon. This is particularly important when ascending, when you'll hike much slower than descending. Take hourly breaks. Make sure you drink something, have a snack, stretch out, and maybe take off a clothing layer before you start hiking again. When you arrive at camp, don't tarry with setting up your shelter. You'll want your sleeping bag to loft, and you'll want to protect your food. If you sit too much before setting up, you can get stiff, and it can be hard to get going again. Happy trails, and enjoy your hike. If this video was useful, please click like and subscribe below.